Eight, how to process your vocals to best communicate your song's message. In this last unit, we'll discuss an array of processing options, including equalization, compression, and time-based effects. You should use any and all of these to make your vocal statement as unique and emotionally impactful as possible. You don't need to wait until the end of your production to start using these effects. For example, if you know that you want the sound of a slapback delay on your lead vocal, or an old-fashioned bandpass transistor radio sound. Go ahead and set that effect up in your monitor chain while tracking. The reason I suggest setting up the effect on your monitor chain and not in your record path is so that you have maximum creative flexibility when mixing. This way your effects are non-destructive and you can tweak the final amount of the effect or remove it altogether while mixing. This is an advantage of software versus hardware-based effects. Keep in mind, however, that you need a reasonably fast computer or an audio interface with internal processing to work efficiently with non-destructive effects. Equalizing or filtering is a way to lower or increase the volume of individual frequency ranges in your vocal. There are four main categories of filters, low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch. The names of the filters tell you exactly what's happening. A low pass filter allows frequencies below a set frequency called the cutoff to pass through. A high pass is just the opposite, allowing frequencies above the cutoff to pass through. A band pass will allow a band of frequencies above and below two cutoff frequencies to pass, while a notch boosts or attenuates a center frequency. The channel EQ included on your DAW will include a combination of these filters spread across the entire range of human hearing, from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, to help you quickly sculpt sounds. So, you're probably wondering, how do I EQ my vocals to make them sound great? While there are amazing presets in every major DAW, which have been created by professional audio engineers to get you started, it's useful to understand the way we perceive sound to get the most out of your EQ. The main thing to know is that human hearing has evolved to favor human speech and is not smooth from low to high frequencies, but is actually kind of lumpy in how we perceive the loudness of certain frequencies. The size of your ear canal creates a natural resonance in the range of 2000 to 5000 Hz or cycles per second. It is not a coincidence that this is also the frequency range of speech consonants. Our perception also favors frequencies centered around 300 Hz, which sit in the range of the fundamental frequencies of human speech. Otherwise, as expected, our hearing gradually trails off at the extreme high and low ends of the range of hearing. If you keep this in mind when using EQ on vocals, you will find great success. In addition to allowing us to get a nice full range vocal sound, equalizers can be used to create special effects. One of the easiest effects is the mid-range sound of the phone filter, transistor radio, or megaphone. These are all variations on band pass filtering with different low and high pass cutoff frequencies. There's also a setting called Q, or resonance, on your EQ which will allow you to emphasize the cutoff frequencies themselves. By dialing in the right cutoff frequencies in Q, you can get some really cool and unique vocal effects. If you know you want this kind of sound ahead of time, you can do something similar with the bullet microphone from Shure or by using an electric megaphone. Another cool thing you can do with an equalizer is place the cutoff frequency under the control of a modulation source. This can be a periodic source, also called an LFO or low frequency oscillator or it can be based on the dynamics of the vocal sound itself, or another input. This last idea of modulating the cutoff with a sound other than the one being processed is traditionally called the sidechain. If you think about it, this is getting into the area of how the talk box and the vocoder work, and this is why audio effects plugins like the auto filter and the vocoder filter bank from Logic's eLock can both be found under the filter submenu in Logic. The next great area of vocal processing is compression. Compression is simply a process that turns down your vocal when it gets louder than a threshold that you set. In addition, you can set how quickly the compressor responds to volume levels that exceed the threshold. This is called attack time. You can also set the time it takes for the compressor to reset itself after it kicks in, which is called the release time. Finally, you can set how much the compressor will turn down the sound after the sound crosses the threshold. A 2 to 1 ratio means that for every 2 units of input energy, also called decibels, you will get 1 unit of output energy. 
Since vocalists tend to move around a bit when singing, compression can really help maintain a consistent vocal level during recording. I recommend setting this up as a monitor only effect so that it's non-destructive and you or your mix engineer will have maximum flexibility when mixing down. While we're on the subject of compression, we should take a look at the concept of side chaining. Side chaining can be used to make your vocals sit better in the mix or to create an entirely new vocal sound. Under the dynamic submenu of your DAW, you'll also see a plugin called the DSer. DSers have been in use for many years in commercial recording studios to help control sibilance. Under the hood of the DSer plugin is a multiband compressor with a sidechain input that uses a bandpass filter to listen to only the sibilant range in the vocal sound. A multiband compressor is simply a compressor that only affects the specified frequency range, not the entire range of the vocal. When the compressor hears the sibilance, the multiband compressor kicks in and lowers the volume of the sibilance. Another really cool thing you can do with a sidechain on your vocals is to create sounds that are rhythmically synced to your track. If you set a high compression ratio with a rhythmic setting for your attack and release times, you can create a rhythmic pulse in the sustained vocals that will sit great in your track. I use this technique in Villains of Our Own Stories in the last chorus when the full choir sings the melody. The choir on its own felt a bit heavy to me, but with the Paris sidechain compression technique, the choir pulsed on the backbeats of the music and sat better in the mix. Another dynamic processor you will see in your plugin menu is the gate or noise gate. The gate is the opposite of a compressor and is designed to increase the level of the vocal when it crosses the threshold. A common application of this is to eliminate background noise in a vocal by setting the threshold above the noise level so that only the sound of the singer can pass through the gate. For sound design purposes, this can also be triggered with a sidechain to set up rhythmic pulses on sustained vocal sounds. This is called gated vocals and is an awesome sound design technique. Let's try it out for fun on Villains of Our Own Stories. How long have you been drifting? Oh, how long have I been hiding? By using a combination of EQ and compression, you can get a full range of vocal sounds that will either sit supportively in your mix or jump right out at the listener, depending on what you want. Don't forget to hit the like and sub buttons for these videos 